From my sponsor Setbanks I received a 3D printer type Genius Pro, made by the company Artillery 3D. The maximum print volume is 22 times 22 times 25 cm. The device itself has the dimensions 43 times 39 times 59 cm. The Genius Pro is the smaller version of the same company's Sindwinder X2, which I have reviewed earlier. So if you have less space on your workbench or want to save some money, you can buy the Genius Pro. In contrast to some competitors, Artillery follows the rules of the license for the Marlin firmware and links the modified source code directly on the manufacturer's website. This is exactly how it should be and very much in the spirit of how open is this gadget. The Genius Pro is delivered almost fully assembled. There are high resolution photos of the package contents on the website. Only the frame has to be mounted on the base... ...a few wires have to be plugged in... ...and the filament holder has to be mounted. Inside the base is the same power supply as in the X2 with a maximum output current of 8.5A at 24V... The touchscreen controller is identical... ...and the mainboard doesn't show any difference either. As already mentioned, the firmware Marlin runs on the microcontroller type STM32F. The plugged in stepper motor drivers can be quickly replaced if necessary, that's how I like it. The electronic components on the axis are connected to the mainboard via ribbon cables. The direct extruder with its gear reduction of 3 to 1 is very robust and quite easy to disassemble if needed. As with the Sidewinder X2 I didn't really find anything to complain about with the Genius Pro either. The backlash of the plastic rollers, which serve as a guide along the extruded aluminum of the axis can be adjusted via eccentric nuts. The belt tension of the X and Y axis is adjusted by moving the pulleys. Both can be done easily, which means that the Genius Pro is ready for use quickly. All axes run smoothly, the whole mechanic is very robust. The two spindles of the Z-axis are coupled via a timing belt, which means that the two ends of the X-axis cannot be moved asynchronously, even when the device is switched off. The mechanics of the printer therefore rarely has to be adjusted and the process is simple either. The auto level function measures the height of the print bed on a grid of 25 points. Thanks to the large hand wheels on the adjusting screws of the print bed, manual leveling or readjusting the height of the build plate can be done quickly. The set offset of the height sensor is adjusted with a sheet of paper in the center of the print bed via the touchscreen. Don't forget to store this value afterwards. The very powerful print bed heating that is operated with mains voltage reaches 100 degrees Celsius after no more than 3 minutes... ...and 130 degrees Celsius after 6 minutes, which corresponds to the maximum temperature that can be achieved. The ambition temperature in my video studio was around 24 degrees Celsius at the time of measurement. With the well responding touchscreen, a first print job from microSD card or, as demonstrated here, from the included USB stick can be started quickly. With this first print, the automatic level function is checked. 
16 discs, each with a diameter of 50 millimeters, are printed on the build plate. The layer height is 0.2 millimeters. The print speed is set to 15 millimeters per second. All of the discs look fine and stick well on the print bed. More on the test procedure and high resolution photos of the result can be found on the website of how open is this gadget. The next test is the obligatory Benji. You will also find all information about the print settings used and high resolution photos of the result on the website. Here is the printing process in moving pictures and with the soundtrack, so open your ears and eyes and judge for yourself. After about 90 minutes, the 3D Benji is finished with the printing speed set to 30 millimeters per second. The Benji speed test that follows now isn't about getting good looking results, it's just to point out the weak points that every 3D printer has. What to look at in this test series is also explained in detail on the website of how open is this gadget. Again, for this video there is. Open your eyes and ears. The second Benji is printed at 60mm per second... and done in half the time after about 45 minutes. The third Benji is printed at 90mm per second... and finished after about 30 minutes. Benji number 4 is printed at 120mm per second and even higher acceleration values which is definitely outside the values recommended by the manufacturer.
but in principle it still works and the Benji is finished after a little more than 20 minutes. In order to print large objects quickly, as much plastic as possible must be extruded per unit of time, which is tested here. until the limit is obviously exceeded. Again, the website of how open is this gadget gives you all the numbers and background information on the test procedure as well as high resolution photos of the results. With the maximum material throughput which was still found to be good, a large 3D Benji is created as a final test. This should be printed as quickly as possible and also look good. With this video I showed you the Atelier Genius Pro in moving pictures and with the sound emitted by this device for people with eyes and ears for details. You can read how open the Genius Pro is, get all information about the test procedures and high resolution photos of the device, its inner components and the test prints achieved on the website of how open is this gadget. With that you can get your own impression of the quality the Genius Pro delivers without anyone babbling of what you should think of it. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.